What's up, everyone? Welcome back to my Four Star School YouTube channel. In today's lesson, we're going to learn Get Connect inside the GetX package, and this is the demo we're going to build using the Get Connect to send the HTTP request following a RESTful API standard, and I will walk through the example and give you an explanation. How to use it? Although we were using the Dio package in our real development, but since GetX provides this feature, let you make a RESTful API communication. So I will just briefly talk about this. And if you are new to my channel, feel free to reach out to my channel page, and you will find Flutter UI from scratch tutorial. Flutter GetX tutorial, Flutter tutorial, and Arta programming language tutorial. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, thumb up my content, and open the notification so you won't miss out the latest Flutter tutorial. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, let's open our Visual Studio Code and Android Emulator. As you see, here I wrote the code before today's lesson, and I will guide you through with these examples and give you an explanation. So first, let's look into the user example total. This will be our main chain point for this application. As you see in this build method, I only uh, set up it is home attribute which will return our uh, user view and another one is I initiate it is binding and I pass the user binding for this user view and let's look into this user binding so in the user binding I first initialize the user provider using this uh, get uh, lazy put and then I lazy initialize the user controller by parsing this user provider as you see i using this get.find and you will find my user provider so let's back to this mind map and the user provider in this example you will provide the restful api communication to your backend so back to the visual studio code and let's look into the user provider. So in the user provider, I extend the get connect, which is the today's topic. And I can do some uh, custom configuration inside the user provider. As you see, uh, we have this own need method, which would run when we initiate our user provider. And we can configure it is a basic URL or a default decoder. And sometimes you can also uh, set that it is a request a modifier or response modifier. So let's back to Visual Studio Code. And then we have this get a list of user method, which will call this get request for our API slash user and it will concat this URL with our base URL so you will see a, a list of user after we call this get user method and that's for our user provider so let's look into our user controller so in the user controller we extend the getx controller also we using this state maxim and i will talk about this state maxim later so first we have this user provider attribute and we pass from it is constructor and in this user controller uh, in each method we're using this fetched all user right so we will call this fetched all user and inside this fetched all user we're using a user provider get users right you will get the response of a list of users and we're using this send method and we can retrieve the data from our re result and we will send it back to our front end 
the reason I use this changed method because I use the state maxim. So it will pass the data to this changed method and it will show on our screen if we have the data. Otherwise, it will show the error. And this will combine with this user view and we have a controller.obx and we can access the state and we can uh, render the user information on the screen. So initially, uh, you will show the uh, circular progress indicator. So when I restart our application, so first you will see a circular indicator, which means we are fetching the data from our backend. And you see after a few seconds, the list of user information list out on our screen means we successful uh, get the user data back in this way. So we will get the user data back and we set this data to our changed method and indicate we have a new state, right? So we can get the state in here. So this one would be our new state, uh, which is a list of user model, right? And we can show our, a list of user on our screen. Okay, so let's basically for this uh, user view. Okay, I know it's hard to understand for the first time, but don't worry, I will talk uh, about this again. So back to the user controller. So first, you need to understand this change method is associated with this state maxim. And when I specify the type for this state maxim, which is a list of the user model, that means uh, the first parameter we have in this change method, we have the same type as we specify at our state maxim. And then this data will be passed back to our uh, user view when we're using this controller.obx, right? So I'm going to rename this state to the data. So it will be better for you to understand. So we will get the data back in this uh, controller.obs. So we will have this data, uh, which is passing from here, All right? So initially, is to fetching the data so you will sh show this uh, circular progress indicator unless we have data back we'll render a list of view contains a list of a uh, user pro profile as you see here right so for example i'm going to change the url in our based url so i change to something uh no exist right so i save I'm going to restart our application and in this time you will see this error message because first it will show the circular progress indicator and then you will show this error as you see the error is the string is not the subtype of int or index because we are sending the wrong based URL so you will see this type of error so you will not call this one it will not trigger this one. This one will only trigger when you successful get the data back. So I'm going to change the user provider and we change to correct URL and we save again and we restart our application. So you will see these uh, trigger, this, this view, the builder will trigger because we have a, a data back right? and we can pass it to this user profile and show a list of user here. And I hope for now you have a better understanding for this get connect. That means you can send in your request to your backend uh, following the RISC for API standard, uh, which is the get post put and delete. But in reality, we were using the third party library called deal. And I will talk that in the future's video. So I think that's all for today's lesson. And I will upload all the source code and my map to my patron so you could find the resources there. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, thumb up my content and open the notification so you won't miss out the latest Flutter tutorial. Okay, thanks for watching. I will see you in next video.